Hey, good morning, everybody. It is uh, Wednesday, Thursday, the 10th of June. Hope uh, you are doing well this week. The week's going along uh, well for you. Uh, today, we are looking at Psalm 14. Uh, Psalm 14, as we move through our time of scripture and prayer together, moving along in the book of Psalms. Again, we are using the uh, the message translation of the Bible, uh, Eugene Peterson's contemporary translation, uh, put together a couple, oh, about 15, 20 years ago uh, now. So uh, again, the design of this of this uh, translation is to is to wake us up to help us hear the same message in, a, in new words, uh, to try to help us uh, become alerted to what the author is uh, attempting to say, or in this case, pray, uh, as the Psalms are uh, prayers, uh, songs and prayers to God. So let's take a moment to settle ourselves and to prepare to hear uh, from God today, whatever God might want to say to us. So let's do that. Psalm 14. Bilious and bloated, they gas. God is gone. Their words are poison gas, fouling the air. They poison rivers and skies. Thistles are their cash crop. God sticks his head out of heaven. He looks around. He's looking for someone not stupid. One man, even. God expectant. Just one God-ready woman. He comes up empty, a string of zeros, useless, unshepherded, sheep taking turns pretending to be shepherd. The 99 follow their fellow. Don't they know anything, all these imposters? Don't they know they can't get away with this? Treating people like a fast food meal over which they're too busy to pray. Night is coming for them and nightmares for God takes the side of victims. Do you think you can mess with the dreams of the poor? You can't, for God makes their dreams come true. Is there anyone around to save Israel? Yes, God is around. God turns life around. Turned around Jacob, skips rope. Turned around Israel, sings laughter. So again, another one of these psalms of lament, a psalm that starts off with a with a complaint. Um, uh, starts off with the uh, acknowledgement of the hard realities of life and the harsh brokenness of the world around the reality that there are many, many uh, ways of living that have nothing to do with God or God's purposes. And so much of the time we feel like we see, we feel like... Um, that's the way to get ahead. In fact, we're often encouraged to live that way in order to get ahead or to make something of ourselves or to, to live in a particular spirit or way. And so it takes a, um, a certain resilience of faith in order to follow Jesus in the long run. And that's what this psalm speaks to, sort of the, 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 ultimate, um, the ultimate failure of living in ways that don't honor God. Uh, in verses, I guess it would be four, uh, three and four, it talks about they can't get away with this, treating people like a fast food meal over which they're too busy to pray. That's sort of the contemporary translation that I think is really helpful to us. It, it, it wakes us up. It, you know, we want to say, wow, what, what was the, what did the, what did the writer really mean by this? And in our world, we can, we can get our heads around that, right? I mean, how much care or um, concern do you give to a fast food meal? Fast food meals are there to simply provide something quickly for us. You know, you're on a long drive, you need a bite to eat, so you stop and you get a, a sandwich at McDonald's. You don't expect it to be amazing, you expect it to be exactly what it is. You consume it and you move along. Um, you, you know, and, and, and you take it for what it is, but you don't give it much thought. Nobody remembers uh, the the meal they had from a fast food restaurant for more than a, more than a few hours, um, you know, it's hard to even remember it the next day. So it's sort of a consumer um, a consumer approach to relationships. 
uh, we have consumer approaches to so much in our to, to so much of our way of living that it does spill over into the way we treat people and the way we enter into relationships and what the psalm is saying is that ultimately that the, those ways can't stand those ways will not flourish will not produce what uh, what they're hoped to produce and so for us you know I think about again what is it that we are what is it that we find disruptive to our faith what is it that concerns us or frustrates us or um, or causes us to to sigh and say Lord why does it have to be this way um, things pop into my head when I when I put that question before myself and I'm sure they are I'm sure that things pop into your head as well. What is it that you see in the world around you right now that's causing you to, to sigh and say, Lord, why, why is it this way? And when, when will you fix it? With the full, again, the, the, the resolving of the, of the psalm, with the full knowledge that God will one day redeem all things. Well, let's pray um, for the day ahead. Loving God, we, we thank you that you promised to set all things right that you promise to redeem and restore, that you promise to fix that which is broken of the world and of our lives. Lord, we thank you that in our lives we can see glimpses of that redemption work, that reconciliation work that you're about, that we see glimpses of how you're moving, bringing life and hope and peace. Lord, today we pray for the broken places of the world and ask that you would be working in mighty ways to bring about healing and love. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be a part of those processes, help us to step into, into the work of your kingdom. Lord, today we want to pray specifically for the things that are on our hearts and minds, broken places, hurting people, so friends, I invite you to lift up the things that are on your heart today. Lord, hear our prayers. And so, God, we do thank you for hearing our prayers and receiving them. And we pray that this day you would help us to go into this world to be your agents of peace and love and hope and restoration. Lord, this day, may we be people who love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And may we be people who love the people that you place in our lives. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be with you, friends. Uh, thank you again for being a part of this little project. It's been going on almost a, well over a year now, and uh, I hope it continues to bring life to you. It does for me. So take care. God bless you, and we will see you soon.